If you are new to Stream Deck, or maybe you're not new to Stream Deck, but maybe feel like you're not using it to its full potential, then this third video in my beginner series is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and in this video uh, we are looking at the third in my series of, uh, well, a beginner's guide to uh, Stream Deck. In video one we gave an introduction to Stream Deck and in video two we looked at how you can go about initially setting it up and some of the basic actions that you can perform with it. Uh, and in this video what we're going to look at is some of the other actions that you can use by accessing the plugins that you have available to you within Stream Deck. So uh, if you haven't watched those first two already and think that that is something you need to know about then I'll leave a link to those in the description below uh, but apart from that let's get straight on into the next part shall we so I'll come over to my screen sharing and this should look a little bit familiar to you because this is where we left off in video two so I have got this running on my mobile this time uh, which is something I didn't have last time uh, as you'll remember but uh, so here we are if I uh, press on my mobile button to go back if you recall that little button in the top right I had set as our little home button so now I can flick between uh, go back into our little work profile or back out and come back into maybe I'll go into a new one so let me just for example I'll open up this little excel profile so I'm just switching backwards and forwards uh, using the uh, app on my mobile or you could do it on your stream deck obviously uh, so what I want to show you uh, in this video is, uh, as I say, we've already covered the uh, system uh, controls where you can add hotkeys and things like that and open uh, applications or files or use it for entering text snippets and even controlling the multimedia, so volume, uh, track, place, pause, things like that on your Mac. Uh, well, I'm going to come out of those ones for a moment and just talk about these other plugins that you have uh, down the uh, right hand side. You may not have all of those in there to begin with. Uh, there are a few of those that come in as uh, as standard. You can always rearrange these. I mentioned this in one of the other videos but it's worth mentioning again just by cl clicking on this little icon here and then if you want to reorder these and put them in a different order then you can easily do that by dragging up and down on these little uh, uh, bars on the right hand side and also if there's any that you don't want to see on your screen then you can always just toggle them off uh, here by clicking on the little uh, arrows next to them the little check boxes so I've disabled my Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio because the world has become a better place since I discovered Ecamm Live uh, so I've just got my Ecamm Live uh, controls in here so what these do is they allow you to basically uh, carry out some functions specific to a particular application. So perhaps Ecamm Live is a good one to start with because it's what I'm using to do all the switching of this video, switching between different scenes, uh, starting my intro music, outro uh, music and all of that sort of business. Uh, so if I open Ecamm Live, uh, the here is where I could add on any of the uh, functions that Ecamm Live as a developer has created for a stream deck so that is one thing to note is these are created usually by third party uh, either the uh, application creators themselves so these are actually by developers uh, by, by the Ecamm Live developer has created this integration into Stream Deck or sometimes you'll get third-party uh, developers who will develop the integration themselves. Uh, but what this allows you to do is uh, as well as just simple keyboard shortcuts you can actually do a lot more uh, functions uh, such as let's just use the example of Ecamm Live if I wanted to switch to a different scene then they have one in here which is run scene and so I could just drag this in and then what you see in these boxes down here is going to very much depend on the functionality that the developer has built in but in this case it's quite a an obvious one it's to run a scene and at the moment it will default to the current scene that I'm on which I've called screen share or share screen and you can even see that it's got a little preview of exactly the uh, screen as it looks uh, at the moment but I could change this to my main scene and so this is all being developed by Ecamm Live and has an integration into it and so what this is doing is it's going into my Ecamm Live scenes list and it's pulling up all the different scenes so if I click on this main one for example which is my main scene funnily enough and now if I press the button on my stream deck it's going to flick over to my main scene so that's how easy it is to just drag and drop those uh, actions onto the uh, onto the stream deck for uh, in this case Ecamm Live 
Now, I did do a video all about uh, how specifically I use Ecamm Live and Stream Deck together. So I'll leave a link to that video in the description uh, and also up in the top corner, of course. Uh, but uh, for now, though, let's just get back to these uh, plugins uh, because one thing to uh, note about these is if you have got a predefined plugin uh, created by a developer such as this one this uh, switching a scene from Ecamm Live uh, this will work no matter what application you are in so even if I happen to be for example on a zoom call or something like that maybe I'm using the Ecamm Live virtual camera to uh, feed my uh, feed from Ecamm Live into zoom uh, then all of these buttons that are predefined as Ecamm Live buttons they will work even if I'm not in the application. Uh, one thing to bear in mind with the uh, shortcut keys, if you come back to remember with uh, the hotkeys rather, uh, so for example the control C for copy, that will obviously work in whatever application you happen to be in at the time. Uh, so just bear that in mind, if you're programming any shortcut keys, they are specific to that uh, to whatever application is open at the time. Whereas these ones that are more like built in to Stream Deck will work regardless. They're more like global commands. Incidentally, if you ever do have something that you need to operate with a hotkey for a specific application where you might not be in the application at the same time, uh, one thing you can always do is use a multi action to do this. And so we do that by uh, going to Stream Deck and doing a multi action. By the way, you can also just right click into a cell or into a button rather, and as well as create folder and paste and copy and paste buttons you can click create multi action from here and the way we would do this if you wanted to have an action that has to be in a specific application is if we come into the actions uh, the first thing we would do would be uh, open application uh, if the application is already this simply serves to switch to the application and bring it to the front to make it the active application which is what we want in this case so let me just think of an example and a good example back to ecamm live is activating demo mode they haven't got a built-in uh, button for that and demo mode <coughs> is what you do when you want to share your whole screen uh, including all of the ecamm interface and the uh, shortcut for that is command D. Well, if I was wanting to do that, say on a Zoom call and my uh, Zoom was the active application, I'd need to get back to Ecamm Live first before pressing the command D. So as I say, we would simply put open a program. And even though the program is open, this is just going to jump back to that one. It's a bit like sort of pressing command tab to get back to the application. And then I would come into my uh, folder here where it's asking me to put in the name of the application so just add that in so this is open ecamm live and then we would add our hotkey which is uh, command d and just press in here command d and there you go it's assigned the uh, hotkey uh, demo mode and then if i come back out of that then now i've got a button uh, which is this one so that is demo demo mode on ecamm live uh, and so that is how you would program a button which is a hotkey, but you need to be in the application for it to work. Uh, so that is a big a big difference between these built-in uh, commands, and that's why they are so uh, so useful. As I say, it very much depends on the developer in terms of uh, the level of integration that they've created. Uh, and in terms of getting extra plugins, uh, I'll do a video all about how to access the store, but I will just show you now how to get the plugins. So if you come up to this little icon at the top here, this is the Stream Deck store. It's called a store, except everything at the moment in there is free. I think that they have been, uh, this was a new feature that was added in version 5. I think that they're building the infrastructure to allow third-party developers to offer their uh, plugins and icons and things like that with, uh, with payments available. But, but for the moment, it is actually all uh, free. So when I click on that icon, it uh, will open up this, which is the Stream Deck store and uh, there's a little sort of splash page which has uh, various different articles and things like that that you can look at and then also down the right hand side left hand side rather <laughs> we've got uh, the plugins uh, icons music and sound effects i'll cover those in a different video i did already uh, touch upon them in the uh, video i did all about the stream deck version 5 software update so be sure to check that one out as well but at the moment we are just looking at the plugins and what you'll find in here 
is a list of all of the different plugins that are available. And uh, you can just have a scroll down through and see all of the ones that are available. Uh, some of these are, are very good. Some of them are maybe a bit questionable, <laughs> not quite as uh, as good, uh, but I'm sure over time this will build out and there'll be more and more in there. Uh, you can see uh, if it is not yet installed because it's got a big install button next to it. And as you come down, if there are any that are already installed, such as I have the Twitch set installed, then there is instead an uninstall button so you can remove it from uh, there instead. So here you can see it gives you a brief description of uh, what they do and then you can, as I say, just click on the install. If you click on it, then it will uh, tell you more a little bit about it, about who the developer is. Uh, in this case, this is by Elgato themselves. Uh, this one is a little utility to display your CPU usage uh, on your Stream Deck. Personally, I you already have uh, an application that I use for that in my menu bar called iStat Menus. Uh, I did an, incidentally a, a video all about the top five uh, menu bar apps for live streamers. So I'll uh, leave a link to that video in there as well, because I mentioned uh, uh, that particular application in that video. Uh, you can also have a little analog clock displaying on one of your buttons. Uh, I don't know why I have that still installed. I did have a little look at it. It's a little bit pointless really and <laughs> ended up bumping that one out of the way. Uh, audio switcher is uh, quite useful if you have multiple different audio devices plugged into your computer. So I do. I have uh, headphones, my audio monitor coming out of my Shure MV7 mic, but then sometimes I want to switch and have the audio coming out from uh, the speakers that are on my monitor, for example. So I can switch between them with that. Uh, Streamlabs, I don't actually use uh, those ones. Uh, Zoom plugin, that is useful for some uh, basic Zoom controls, but we'll have a look at that a little bit later. Uh, and so on and so on. I won't go through every single one of these. <laughs> I've looked at a number of them, but uh, yeah, when we get onto specific use cases for Stream Deck, I'm going to do uh, a sort of little video on each of my specific applications that I use and how I've got them uh, set up. But for now, this is just to show you uh, that there are lots of other uh, lots of other plugins. Uh, Spotify, if you listen to music, then that's quite a handy one to have because it gives you global controls to your Spotify uh, whilst you are uh, working away or doing whatever and uh, any others of note. Uh, Apple Mail, so this is possibly one to avoid. <laughs> this will actually display the number of unread mail messages on your <laughs> on your stream deck. Personally, I think that that's a, a bit of a, uh, a danger, having unread messages displaying anywhere because it just sort of distracts you from what you're doing. But there you go, that's just my point of view. Uh, another few that I use quite heavily is obviously the Ecamm Live one I've talked about, uh, PowerPoint, Keynote, uh, Keyboard Maestro, which will come on to in the advanced uh, <laughs> section. And then, uh, yeah, that's about all that I've got on here, actually. We'll see some others when I go in. But yeah, as you can see, there's quite a lot in here. And uh, this is how you install them. So if I just come back out of here, once you do install them, they will appear uh, down the side here. So uh, that one that I mentioned, audio devices, this one is just a simple toggle and it lets you toggle between uh, two different audio devices. So at the moment, uh, I could have this go between uh, my Shure uh, MV7 output and my uh, monitor, which is this one, my Philips 43 inch monitor with speakers. So there, when I toggle this one, it's just going to flip backwards and forwards. And instead of the sound coming out of my headphones, it's going to come out of my speakers instead. I find that quite useful because I uh, do spend a lot of time on Zoom calls and things like that, or recording these videos where I want the sound to come through uh, on my headphones. But then at other times when I'm watching uh, educational YouTube videos and the like, <laughs> then I tend to have it coming out through my, uh, my TV through my monitor. I keep calling it a TV because it's about the size of a TV, but it is a <laughs> monitor. Uh, so there are a few more here that I don't use. I should probably toggle that one off, in fact. Uh, and then there's some automation stuff that I have with uh, Keyboard Maestro here. And then this one, actually, if you are a Keyboard Maestro user, I'm probably getting a bit too far ahead of myself. Uh, if you are a Keyboard Maestro user, there is the Keyboard Maestro, obviously, plugin. But actually, this KM link is far better. And I'll cover that when I get on to my Keyboard Maestro uh, tutorial. Now, uh, the analog clock one, that's the one I mentioned before. And if this, then that. Uh, so if you are an if this, then that user, you can actually set up buttons to trigger some of your actions in there as well. 
but that is basically how you add in uh, these controls. I should probably just mention Zoom because Zoom is quite a common one that people use. In fact, why don't we just come to an entirely new uh, pro uh, profile uh, like this. And so yeah, you can see you can just drag these onto the screen. Uh, so you've got a mute button, you can toggle your video on and off. You can see how it's got a red stripe through it and then it's actually grayed out because Zoom isn't open. But when Zoom is open, it's either an active button, so blue with a white background, or it puts that red stripe if the camera's off or the, uh, the uh, microphone's off and so on. Uh, you can also uh, toggle the uh, sort of sharing screen that you get in Zoom to share your um, window or what, whatever. Uh, you've got another button there to uh, leave the meeting. <clears throat> So these are all handy buttons to have. Uh, <laughs> I always find meetings coming to an end is a funny thing. People still haven't quite got the hang of exactly how to leave a meeting and never sure quite when to go and how to how to exit. And then you always see that moment where people are fumbling around looking for how to actually close the window. Well, you can just have a button for it. So you press that and then it will close the Zoom meeting. Uh, and then, yes, just some other, other basic Zoom related <laughs> things. Uh, so then let me come down to this one as well. If you use PowerPoint or Keynote, then there are things here. I mean, obviously I tend to use one of my little uh, clickers when I'm doing PowerPoint presentations, but you can also have them uh, programmed here. So another use case for this would be if you are doing a presentation with uh, either Keynote, you've got the same sort of functionality in here, by the way. So play slide, next slide, and so on. If you were doing a presentation in Keynote or PowerPoint and you were bringing that into your Ecamm Live, for example, a bit specific, but there you go, uh, then you could control your slides with the uh, these slide buttons here uh, and then also your Ecamm Live all from one screen of your Stream Deck. So that is another use case. And then these are a couple of things for uh, Twitch and uh, YouTube. Now, you may remember from my first video, I mentioned in the system preferences, how, uh, or rather the, the application preferences, uh, how you could link accounts. So here you can link your Twitch account, your YouTube account, uh, also uh, Twitter and Streamlabs. Uh, so if you have got those accounts linked, then these uh, things at the bottom here, these Twitch commands and YouTube commands will obviously work because you've linked it to those accounts. So that is a little sort of demonstration of uh, how you can use these uh, these. Um, plugins as they are called to add extra functionality to your stream deck and so it's really just a case of uh, thinking about the applications that you use uh, going into the uh, uh, stream deck store using that little button just up at the top there and uh, checking out all of the different uh, developers that have created buttons for your stream deck and finding out which ones take your fancy now i was, will as i say be making a series of videos about uh, my specific use cases uh, of using stream deck with specific applications in the hope that it will be uh, useful to uh, some of you as well and uh, hopefully i'll get some feedback on them as well and uh, hopefully i can improve on my processes as well and i uh, will go into uh, some in some of the sort of advanced vi uh, videos about how i bring this all together and combine Stream Deck with uh, five of my favorite sort of uh, power user apps, if you like, for the Mac, which are a Keyboard Maestro, a Text Expander, a Hazel, Alfred and Moom. <laughs> all quite random words there, but uh, combining all of those things together, you can really achieve some amazing things with uh, the Mac. And uh, yes, yeah, certainly linking that all in with Stream Deck takes it to uh, yet another level. So uh, that's one video to watch out for if you are a Mac power user. And uh, so I'll leave a link to that when I've completed it back into this video as well. But for now, if you have found this continuing uh, process of uh, this uh, tutorial on a beginning guide to stream deck useful then please go ahead and like the video also if you know anybody else who is a stream deck user it really help if you would share the video with others as well and uh, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever i make any new videos but as always don't go anywhere because there are still plenty more good videos coming up next and i'll leave the stream deck playlist over there on the bottom right have a great day